If you want to save hours in diagnostic time and find all of those faults that the other garages couldn't find, then I think Oscilloscope Masters is what you need. And it closes on September the 28th, so you better get in fast. What I'm gonna run you through now is one of the bonuses that we're including with the Lifetime Access Oscilloscope Masters. This is the exclusive Oscilloscope Masters live event, which we're gonna be holding over a number of weeks after we close the doors. I polled our members and asked them what they wanted to see and when they wanted to see it. And I have come up with six live training events covering basic systems like setup and oscilloscope specifications up to advanced testing like networks and pulse sensor diagnostics. We're just working out the dates now, but all of the sessions will also be recorded as many people said they just watched the recording, which is fine. So in the first session, we're gonna have a look at basics. So this is all the oscilloscope setup, voltage time, triggers, things like that. Also, we're gonna have a look at filters and the basics of math channels and custom probes. So we can talk about things like amp clamps and pressure sensors and secondary ignition probes. And something we get a lot of questions about is oscilloscopes. Which type of oscilloscope can I use? So uh, oscilloscope masters can be applied to any oscilloscope type. However, they're not all built the same. So we're gonna dive into the specifications of what you need to look for in your oscilloscope and why your waveform might not look like what you're expecting it to look like. So a bit of troubleshooting as well. So if you can't get your waveform on the screen, what are the basic checks you need to run through so you can end up getting the signal you are expecting? It's all about confidence. That's session one. Session two, we're gonna dive into sensors and actuators. So this is what you're mostly gonna be testing with the oscilloscope. And there are a few different ways you can do it. You can look at voltage, you can look at current, and then you can also activate the vehicle in different dynamic ways to look at different properties of those systems. We're gonna have a look at all these different creative ways you can use the oscilloscope. For example, here we've got a very slow acting sensor. This is a fuel pressure sensor off a diesel engine. There's quite a lot of information that can be got from this waveform and a lot more information than what you'd find on live data. Here we have the uh, voltage supply and current draw for a fuel pump motor. So we're gonna dig into what this is here. It's PWM, pulse width modulation, and this is the current. So we're gonna look at why is it all wiggly like this and, and why is it going up and down and is that important? What can you do with that information? So there's lots for us to dig into there. In the third session, this is gonna be really good. Lots of time saving here. This is essential engine mechanical. First of all, we're gonna dive into the relative compression test, which is probably the number one test you can perform with an oscilloscope. It's very easy. However, there's so much that you can do with that. You can actually test many different parts of the system. And just by looking at it, you can work out not only if compression's down, but if you've got certain mechanical issues, whether you've got timing problems, whether you've got blockages in the intake and exhaust system, very, very useful test. And we're gonna dive into that with case studies. Another favorite is the camshaft crankshaft correlation test. So this is where you're looking at crankshaft and camshaft sensors to see whether your engine is in correct time or not. Now, you might not believe it, but sometimes very, very small anomalies in engine timing can cause serious engine running problems. So we're gonna have a look at how you can do that and really just highlight how much time you can save. I've got a car here and it would probably take you about an hour and a half to actually put the timing pins in to check the timing, whereas this test here, 10 minutes, 20 minutes at the most if you've got to take some trims off. So really, really valuable test. And again, there's lots more we can dive into with that. It's not just about the timing, but it's about everything else that's going out on that page. Session four is about ignition and injector testing. We're gonna have a look at all the different ways you can test ignition. Whether it be with something like this, which is a KV ignition uh, lead clamp, or the COP coil-on plug uh, probe. So there's a few other different ways as well. We're gonna have a look at all of those and the benefits and disadvantages of, of each type of test. And ultimately, what you're looking for in that ignition test. So here we've got an ignition coil and an injector on the page here. And there's certain things that we can look at and point out on this ignition waveform here to try and work out 
what is happening in the cylinder when the ignition coil fires. Uh, we've also got an injector current ramp on here, which we're gonna look into in a bit more detail. This is for a very uh, simple injector, one of the port style injectors, but we're also gonna dive into modern technology as well, like direct injection, GDI, diesel injectors, and have a look at the waveforms that we get for those. So here we've got the voltage and current for one of the modern direct injection fuel injectors. So after that, we're getting into some really interesting stuff. That stuff that we looked at before is generally the stuff you might look at before you do a test like this. So this is all about in-cylinder pressure testing, actually putting a pressure sensor inside the cylinder to measure what's happening. What we can do from that is actually look at everything that's going on around that cylinder. So things like valve events, opening and closing, whether we're reaching compression, whether we're pulling the right amount of vacuum during an intake stroke, all these different things can point towards different mechanical problems. And then we've got a really interesting test. What makes these tests here so interesting and powerful is that the pulse sensors, which look a little something like that, can be bought for very, very small amount of money. You can even make them, okay? What makes them even better is they are very, very sensitive at picking up the small fluctuations in intake and exhaust gas pulsations. And we can actually use those to identify mechanical issues within the engine without taking the rocker cover and everything off. You know, very, very powerful stuff. Once we've had a look at that, we're getting onto networks and advanced features. So Canvas forms the backbone of pretty much every single modern vehicle. There are a number of other different networks out there as well, like Flexray, Ethernet, Linbus. We're gonna focus on Canvas to start with and show you how to get a really good waveform up on the screen, and then also what happens when we put faults on. So ideally, by the end of this session, you're gonna be able to pretty much have a look at a waveform like this and say, I've got a good idea of what's wrong there. We'll also take a look at Limbus because that's also a very, very popular network and very, very easy to diagnose when you've got an oscilloscope to hand. Some really cool things to look out for on there. So that's the live session that we're including with Oscilloscope Masters. As we said, we're gonna record all of those sessions, so if you can't make it, don't worry. Most of the sessions will be scheduled on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, in the UK evening time, as this is what our members told us they preferred the most. The doors close on this offer Sunday the 28th of September. So if you want to get in and be a part of these live training sessions, in addition to having lifetime access to all of the Oscilloscope Masters training, then you need to get in now. I'll see you inside and look out for the dates of these live sessions.